Hello everybody and welcome to another video. So as you could probably tell from the different perspective, this is going to be a slightly different video today. Um, today I'm going to take a look at the mission editor and pass on some of the skills that I've learned over the last few weeks and months playing around with the mission editor and hopefully uh, allow you to be able to start making missions of your own, either single player or multiplayer for the servers. Um, so, first of all, before I start, I've got my uh, both what I can see here and my desktop screen. Uh, I'm recording both. So, I can show you actually on the desktop screen when you open the game. You can see down at the bottom here, there are three buttons. So, you can quit, you can enter the map editor, and you can enter the mission editor. So, you don't actually need your headset on to get into the mission editor. You can get there straight from the main menu. However, if you are in the game, like I am now while I'm recording, you can start the game. And then on the first screen you come to, you see here we have the map and mission editor. And if you select one of these options, it will take you out of the headset and it will put you onto the desktop. The mission editor is all done on the desktop. So I will start the mission editor and then I will see you on the desktop. Okay, so here we are. I'm just going to maximize my screen. And you, as you can probably tell by the audio, uh, I'm now working on the desktop. So first of all, we have two different types of mission that we can create. We can create a standalone mission, and these are only available in single player. So this is just one standard mission all on its own. And then we have the campaign editor and a campaign is either a bunch of standalone missions for a single player or this is also where you create multiplayer games so i'm going to go into the campaign editor and you can see i have a few campaigns these are basically folders that i've set up to put maps in um, so let's go to the tutorial um, i've already set this up so actually i'm just going to delete that one uh, there was nothing in there anyway. And I'm going to start a new campaign because I did want to show this screen. So first of all, we have our file name for our file. So I'll just call this uh, YouTube Tutorial. And then if you are playing a single player campaign, you select the vehicle type here. So if I wanted to make a single cam uh, player campaign for the Wasp, I would pick the wasp here. If you want it to be a multiplayer campaign, you tick this box and you notice this is no longer available um, because you can then use the selection in the multiplayer spawn, which we'll see uh, later to create that. Once we've got that, I just click save and then we have my campaign. So we can give the overall campaign a name. So I'm just going to call this tutorial and then we can give it a description. A tutorial for YouTube. Once we've got that, I'm going to click save because this is campaign information in this box here. So I'm going to click save. And then over here, we have the missions. So first of all, we can add an image to our campaign. So if you want an overall image for the campaign, and then the image on this side is the image per mission within the campaign. So I'm going to add a new mission, and again, I will call this um, YouTube Tutorial. I'll leave the map as Akatan because it's quite a small map uh, and it loads very fast. So I will save. Now you can see I have a mission down here in my missions. And I can add more and more and more, and you can see we get mission one, the next one will be mission two, and so on. Now I've got my mission, I'm just going to click edit and it will open the map in the in the map editor. So as we see here, this is the Akatan airbase where, where we are used to starting off. So first of all, controls for moving around the, um, the mission editor. You hold the right mouse button to orbit your view around, around the cursor point. You can roll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out from the cursor point. 
you can press W, S, A, and D to slide the cursor points around. The cursor point also has an arrow for its forward position, and we can rotate the cursor point with Q and E. We, you can also move faster around with the WASD buttons by holding shift. So normal movement speed and shift movement speed. And that also works with revolving. So normal speed and then shift speed. If you want to move very fast across the map, just zoom out and then hold shift and use WASD. So uh, you can also set the height of the cursor. So you can hold control and roll the mouse wheel backwards and forwards. And also if you notice down here, we've got a meters above sea level, a meters above ground level, and also a course heading. So if I rotate the cursor, you see the course heading change. And if I hold shift and roll the mouse wheel, you'll see the altitude change. And you can also set these. So let's say that this is set to 90. Um, and enter so uh, it would change to uh, the magnetic bearing of 90 degrees and um, if I want to start at 200 meters above sea level I can put that in or above ground level uh, but for this I'm just going to scroll it all the way down and we will start by adding in some aircraft so first of all I'm going to line my cursor up because we don't want to be bumping into the sides of the hangar. And I need to add in some multiplayer spawns. We can't play if there is nowhere for the player to spawn. So I'm going to go to Unit, and we'll select a new unit. It will be an allied unit, and then we have player down here. So in all the units, you have the allied aircraft, the allied sea vessels, a storage tent, the uh, stationary targets, so a, a sand dish or a sand launcher. Ground targets, so these are mobile units. Ground support units, um, rearm and refuel points, which I'll show you later. Uh, the player spawn and uh, test, which I haven't seen anything in there. I'm guessing that's for the dev. So I'm going to select MP spawn. I can double click or click it and click OK. And we see it adds a, a spawn node in there it adds uh, um, a glyph a model for us so we then get a unit tools a uh, tools box popping up so here i can select the vehicle because we can have different vehicle types in a multiplayer mission so maybe i'll just set this to the fa26 we'll assign it a vehicle group so it's going to be alpha start mode is cold is you need to turn everything off on flight ready is it's all turned on and ready to go and flight ap is flight autopilot so if you want the vehicle to be flying along it should be in flight autopilot not just flight ready um and also for testing i advise alpha 11 um to be your testing aircraft whatever that may be and have it as flight ready um, because when you're testing, you don't want to have to turn it on all, every single time you're doing testing. You just want to jump in, do the test, and, and get back out. So for Alpha 1.1, 1, 1, um, I will always set this for flight ready. Everyone else, I will set for cold. Now, I'm going to leave this on cold for now, and I'll show you why in a second. Under here, you can select the equipment. So if you want to limit the vehicle to specific equipment, you would select none. And then we'll maybe have fuel and guns, if you wanted the guns only, or maybe guns and sidewinders, um, whatever you want, or all. Um, this is the options in the equipment screen when you are in the lobby. So this will allow uh, the different types of equipment. Initial airspeed is if you are in autopilot mode. And this is in meters per second. Everything in the uh, mission editor is in metric. So if you want to convert this, you will have to manually convert it to feet and miles. RTB waypoint is spawned, so on the nav map, if you press the RTB button, it will put the waypoint where you spawn, and whether you want to receive friendly damage or not. You can also rename these, 
I do advise this. Um, so it's going to be MP spawn A1-1. So I know this is alpha 1-1 one, one in the list. It's the first alpha that I put down. And, and that, that's why it becomes 1-1. One, one. And I'm going to need more than one because it's a multiplayer. But instead of creating a new unit, what I can do is just click copy. And it copies the, the last unit, uh, which this was. It was alpha 1-1, one, one, which I pressed copy on. Um, this yellow-orange colour means that we can move it around so once you copy it you've got to click move to fix it into place so let's maybe add um let's have a different unit type um let's go for uh, what we're doing I still want to copy and move, but a different unit type this time. I'll just select the unit and we'll put these in Foxtrot unit. And I'm going to come over here and again, I'm going to copy and move. And notice this was the last one I had highlighted and took copy on. So it wasn't the F26 that it copied, it was the F45. If you want the helis, move again. Copy and move, and this time change it to the AH-94. With the AH-94, you also get a load slot. So if you don't want gunners in the heli, the heli, leave it as one. If you want to load gunners, set it to two. We'll change the group as well. We will make these hotel. And I'll put two of them in as well. Copy and move. So there we go, we have six spawn points. I could now go through and rename them because this is alpha. Okay, so I've renamed them all again, just so, so it makes it easy for me to identify the units in here if I want to jump to one of these units later. For instance, I know I want to go to alpha 1-1 one, one and set the start mode at flight ready. So I've got some units now, I can close these and I no longer need to mess around with these units. I could add some other units in, so maybe add um, some base defences in here or something like that. And it's very, very similar. You would just add them in, so it would be a ground unit, for instance. And let's have, let's have a C-RAM. There's our C-RAM. Uh, I'm going to select move and that will snap into the cursor and yeah let's just put him at the end over here uh, again we can assign a unit group so maybe uh, delta for defenses the movement speed I think is in meters per minute I think that's what this number is so we've got slow medium and fast then we've got different behavior types, which we'll look at these shortly. So we've got path, parked, stay in radius, which would need a waypoint, which again we'll see shortly, follow and rail path. The default path, for instance, if we set it to path here, the default path we would then have to select from here. Or if we had stay within radius or something, we would need to put the waypoint in here. We can set it to engage enemies or not. This can be useful again later on. We'll see this with events. Detection mode is whether you want the allied units to be able to see them straight away or whether you would need to actually go and find them. So if we set this to force detected, we will see them straight off on the map. If we set if it's force undetected, you won't be able to see it on the map. And default um, is basically just you know what the default is uh, once you if somebody's around it for instance or you fly near it it will pop up so however you want to see these again once this has been spotted or locked it will become detected it just means it starts off as undetected uh, but it's an allied unit i'll just leave it as force detected and we can set it as invincible as well so it can't be destroyed and also we can receive friendly damage Uh, placing our units is exactly the same as placing enemy units and we need enemies to shoot. So first of all, let's add some units in. 
So I want my F-26s, and let's give them something to do. So I'm going to move over here and we'll add some aircraft. Actually, let's add an aircraft carrier first. So I'm going to, again, add a new unit, and this time I'm going to select enemy units. I'll go to C, units, and there is the enemy carrier. Just double-click the carrier. And there it is. We add a carrier in. And we can also add in a bit of defence for the carrier. Uh, first of all, let me apply some things to it. So I will apply Sierra Group or C Group. I'll leave it as parked for now. I'm not going to change any of this. Do we want it to engage enemies if they fly too close? Well, yes. Um, do we want it detected or undetected? This is enemies. I'm going to leave it as undetected. You're going to have to go and find it. Spawn immediately and engage. Is it invincible? And will it receive friendly damage? And as I was saying, we'll, we'll add some more units in there. So I'll add a missile cruiser. We'll add it to Sierra Group. Now we've picked a group. It will show up here. So we'll add it to Sierra Group. And again, I will leave it undetected. And I'm going to copy that missile cruiser and we'll have two of them. Now we have the carrier, I can add in my units, my air units. So I'm going to add a new unit. We'll go to aircraft. Um, we'll add the ASF-30. There's one unit. We'll make this alpha. This is the enemy alpha unit. Um, its default behavior could be orbit, but I'm going to set it to part. I'll show you why shortly. Um, the initial airspeed is if we have it set to fly autopilot and its default navigation speed. If it's just flying around, that's going to be that speed. If we wanted it to orbit a point, we would need the waypoint. Again, we'll see those later. It can follow a path. It's its default flight altitude. Again, if we don't set that uh, with waypoints and things like that, it will just fly at 3,000 meters. Um, all these other settings are pretty much straightforward. It's RTB destination. I'm going to change this to its carrier. It's parked mode. So I've got it as parked, but it's parked mode is flight ready. So I'm going to leave it as flight ready. Um, I want it to engage. I'll leave all these as they are currently. And then I'm going to come over here and copy move. Copy move move. So these last two, I'm going to change these to Bravo. So we have two in Bravo group and two in Alpha group. So now I've got that, I'm not changed, I'm not going to change any settings. Again, we can change their equipment and things like that. I'm not going to do that because what I want to do is, first of all, zoom right into the carrier. Because if I select the carrier, I'm just going to move away. There we go. Uh, we see we get this extra option here to edit the carrier. So you then need to edit the carrier to add these to the flight deck. So I will add the first two, 11 and 12, which were group A. And again, just to separate them, I'll put group B down at the back. I'm going to accept that now, and if I zoom into my carrier, you can now see that the uh, the glyphs, the nodes, are in place. So, we've got something for the, um, the wasps to attack. Let's have something for the F-45s. So, let's maybe get them doing a bit of seed. So down here on this nice flat bit of, of land, again, I'll add a new unit, and these will be stationary units. I will pick the, we'll pick the, uh, let's pick these SA radar, because this has got 360 degree radar capabilities. It's probably a good reason to send in a stealth aircraft. So I'll, I'll, I'll pick one of those. And again, there's not many options that I can change here. But I am going to come over here and add another one. So again, copy move, just to copy the last option. And then out to the side, 
we'll add in some more units, which is the SAM launcher. So now we've got the SAM launcher, we see we can select the radars. So that's why I put the radars in first, because the SAM needs a radar. And we'll select both of them. So we would have to destroy both radars in order to take out all the SAM network. I'm going to allow it to reload every two minutes. And I want it to engage the enemies. So I'm going to come over here. Uh, I'll copy and move. So I now have two. And lastly, let's maybe get something for the attack helis to do. So for this, for the helicopters to make it a little bit more difficult for them, I'm going to create a path for these next units. But first of all, I'll drop the units in. So let's put them all here. Uh, and I will just do a line of tanks. So we'll add some new units, some grown units. That's artillery. So we'll have a tank. This can be, we'll just put these as Charlie group um, for city. Um, I'm going to leave all of this as it is for now. We'll come back to this. Uh, and then just copy and move. So two of those. And I'll add a new unit. Maybe, um, maybe go for the IROPC. Uh, something that can shoot missiles back and again this can go in charlie group with the rest and i'll add another one so as i said to make this interesting we'll, we'll give a path for these units to follow and the next tab down here is paths i'm going to create a new path i'm going to rename it and just call it city path again so it's easy to understand Maybe And then it's as simple as just start adding points. So it's a new point here. And then where do I want them to travel? So I'll to maybe have them go to this intersection. Add a new point. And then maybe go this way. And we'll add a new point there. I like to try and get them roughly in the middle. And then maybe we'll come to the... Uh, oops, I wasn't supposed to move point. I'm supposed to add point. <laughs> so there we go. Let me come back over here. That's where it was. Oh, new point. And then we'll come to the end. That's where we'll stay in the city and make it a little bit difficult for them. New point. I did it again. Not move point. There we go. New point. There we go. Let's come here. Have a new point there. And go right back over here. a new point at this intersection and then lastly first of all you can see it's a very curvy line which is no good through a city uh, this is good for aircraft because uh, they don't turn 90 degrees very well um, but for these tanks in the city I want them to follow the streets so to do that I change my path mode to linear so you've got smooth linear and bezier and and this one is i think is just much smoother much more flowing um than smooth uh, but for what we want is linear so you can see linear is nice straight lines and then last of all here is my final point and i want these vehicles to keep moving to keep doing this so i'm going to select loop and you can see it adds that last um track in for me you can also see arrows moving around or uh, you know, you can see points moving around the path, so that's showing you the direction of the path, and you can reverse the path if you want. I'm going to go back to these units and 
starting off at the tank, its behavior is just going to be path. And I will give it the city path as its default path. And again, I'll do this with all of them. Now, if I was going to do a lot of these, I would put the path down first, then assign path and the path, the, the default path to the unit, and then copy paste it because it will just copy this with it. But for, for a small amount, um, that's, you know, it's easy enough just doing that and just changing a few of them. So we now have a few enemy units driving around. Little bit of something for everybody to do again this is only a tutorial it's not going to be a full mission it's just a little taster of all the tools next we have waypoints the next tab along is waypoints so i have mentioned this uh, a few times so let's maybe add um i know that these are going to be driving roughly around here so i'm going to add in a waypoint and i'll maybe put it just above the city I'm going to add new point and I'll rename this and maybe make this AH94 times. Just something that I can remember it. Maybe put one over here. Um, and I'll rename this as um, seed radars. And then lastly, I'm actually going to add a few points here. So for this, no, I'm not going to do it this way. Um, what I could do is add a few waypoints um, around and just say, go to this waypoint, this waypoint, and this waypoint. In fact, I'll do that. We've seen a path. Um, the other thing I was going to do is put a path in and you can send that path to the GPS on an aircraft. So I'll show you both. So first of all, let me just drop this path in quickly. So new path, rename, um, black path. So we'll keep it low to start off with. So we'll go 200 meters above sea level and we'll come to this corner. We'll add a new point. I'm going to have this as smooth. New point. New point. So hopefully by this time, by the time these aircraft have got around here, the F-45s will have taken out the sand. So now we can start going up. So my new point will be here. And I'll leave it as that. The other way, as I said, I could have put um, waypoints in, so I can add new points and, and just keep adding these points around. Uh, but I think the path is, is better. So I'm going to move this new waypoint now. And maybe set this one over here. I'll apply to uh, leave it there. And then I'm going to rename this to um, FA-26 Mission. So we've got a few waypoints now dotted around the map. One last one I'm going to add in is at the base. Always handy to have right in the middle of the runway. And I'm new and rename this base. So we've got, uh, we've got some paths, we've got some waypoints. Next, let's have a look at the events. Now, there are um, three different types of events. There is timed events, triggered events, and sequence events. Uh, I don't use sequence events very much, so I'm not going to cover that. It's, it's a little bit above my pay grade, I think. Um, but timed events and triggered events are fairly easy. So the first one... I'm going to create a timed event and I'm going to edit to open this one. Um, I'm going to rename this and this is going to be uh, my, my start information really. So this is going to, to start doing certain things at certain timed intervals. 
So I'm just going to put this as mission timer. It will begin immediately. So as soon as the mission starts, this timer starts. I'll add a new event and this event is going to start at 10 seconds. So 10 seconds after the mission starts, hopefully there's enough people in the, in the lobby. Um, and this is going to be um, notes. I'll just call this one notes. And now we can start adding in the actions. What do we want to happen at 10 seconds? So I'm going to select new action. And here's my action. I can add multiples of these. Probably shouldn't have done that because deleting can be a bit of a pain like this. Um, but this action, I'm going to click that. And now we've got uh, quite a lot of um, options that we have in the mission editor. And these are very, very similar throughout actions that we'll see coming up. So first of all, we've got units, so we can apply unit specific actions. We've got unit groups, so we can apply group specific actions. Uh, I'm not going to go through each and every one of these. Um, this video will be days long. Um, but we can, um, for instance, do certain things. I'll, I'll do this shortly. Um, objectives, we don't have any, but we can either complete, fail or I think there's already a third option, but we basically you can act, uh, complete, fail, or start an objective, uh, a new objective. Timed events, well, we've already got one in, but we can also have triggers for these events. So we can say begin or stop a timed event. So let's say, for instance, if you destroy a SAM site, you can have an event on there to say after, you know, start, um, begin a timed event, and that timed event could be for five minutes. So you destroy a SAM site, you start a timed event, and that timed event is for maybe some aircraft to show up, to spawn in the game, basically. Um, so that's, you know, you can have multiple different timed events. I'm just using this one as a, as a kind of start. We've got triggered events, which we will see shortly, and event sequences. Again, these are just to trigger or stop. System, this is where I'm going to be picking from. Static objects, I don't have any static objects in game. Again, we'll see them later. And then base, you can change um, the team of an air base. So again, if you destroyed all the units on a base, you can change it to friendly. But for what I want to do at the start of the mission, I'm going to go to system. I'm going to pick tutorial and I'm going to display a message. And this message is just going to be start up and get airborne. I will also show this on screen for five seconds. So 10 seconds into the start of the game, all the players in the game are gonna get the message, flash up on their screen, start up and get airborne. I could have this as an audio radio message. So I'll just show you a few different ones. So under system, you have radio message. Priority radio message just means it cuts off whatever's on the radio. So let's say Overlord is talking. A priority message will cut off Overlord and start playing. Otherwise, a uh, uh, radio message is just something to an audio file that you can play at that particular time um but background music as well that's different than a radio message radio message generally short background music is something that will just keep playing um this is one that i wanted we can send waypoint to a gps or we can send the path to the gps so we'll, we'll do this short um but yeah i was just showing you, you can have a radio message in there Next, um, we want we would want maybe some missions to start. So I'm only going to do one of these because creating objectives is the same. So I'm not going to do one for the helis, one for the F-45, one for the F-26. Um, so it's just going to be the same thing. So what I will do is I'm going to build the mission now for the F-26, and that's in objectives. So I'm going to add a new objective edit uh, you can see you've got objectives for team a and team b as well if you're a pvp match um, but my first objective i'm going to rename this as take off and all the, all i need is you can start this uh, sorry uh, this is the start mode so i don't want this what mission to start immediately uh, do i want it to be triggered do i need a prerequisite mission which we'll see shortly or is this the final mission 
So for this, I want to start immediately. And all I want to do is take off. Now, notice there is no take off. So what we can do is select this option, conditional. And then we're going to get some conditions over here. I don't need a waypoint because all I want them to do is get airborne, just take off, that's it. So I don't need to, a waypoint or to set anything. And we can set the mission as take off. Simple objective. And over here, I'm going to select this and I'm going to add unit. And again, this is just for the F26s. So I'm going to add unit, but there are two of them. And we'll see why I've done this shortly. And I'm going to add an OR statement in. And we can connect these yellow dots together to create our logic. So first of all, I'll connect these ORs and then we'll go to the output. And then I'm going to select Alpha 1 1. And this one will be Alpha 1 2. So basically any of Alpha team, Alpha 1 or Alpha 2, can f fulfill this condition. And that is to be... Altitude above sea level, altitude above ground level, altitude radar is above ground level. So I'm going to go altitude greater than maybe 20 metres. Probably 10 metres is enough. And I'll do the same. And that's it. That's that's my condition. So as long as one of the aircraft take off, as long as Alpha 1-1 or Alpha 1-2 takes off at the beginning of the mission, then it will consider this a a complete mission so that's that's the first one i can click okay that's my takeoff so i get a notification with the time event to say take off and i also get my mission um, once i have taken off my mission will, will be uh, fulfilled so i then want a an, another option uh, i want the next option along in the mission so i'm just going to click new i'll edit this one and this one will be Follow the GPS path. This one again is just, um, I think we can have this as fly to. And when we start this event, we saw before that I can actually send GPS path and then what do we want to send so it's going to be the flight path so this is just going to send a GPS path and this is going to all units uh, so it will just go across the board to the entire team all the team will get it and you'll see a target group at the side so in your GPS screen, on the left hand side, you will have your group, your GPS group. This will come in as group one. And I'll put follow the path in the GPS. So at the start of the event, they have to, they will receive the path. So basically, as they are 10 meters off the ground, they are going to receive the path. And then they are told to follow the waypoint. Again, I don't have waypoints because it's just a path. It will pop up on the path uh, on the GPS, so I don't need a waypoint again. However, this is a fly two, so I'm going to come over here, and at the end of this path, wherever it may be. So let me just OK this for now. I'm going to open this path, and to get to this last waypoint. I'm going to double click on it and you see the mouse cursor snapped to that. Uh, so in order for this fly to to work, let's just add a waypoint at that point. New point. And I'll rename this as path end. Um, go back to my objectives. Follow the GPS path. And I want this to go to path end. But I'm not going to also set the waypoint because that will give the pilot this waypoint and it will make him fly straight across here rather than following the path. And I want him to follow the path all the way around so the F-45s have a chance to do seed. Once they get to within 2,000 metres of this 
point. So I'm going to change that to one kilometer. So as long as they get to within one kilometer, I'll make it spherical. If it wasn't spherical, it would just be a cylinder from ground to space. Uh, but for this, I want them within one kilometer of this point. And then that will be this um, objective complete. From then, we can create another objective. So this is the next objective in the mission. And this one is now going to be um, take out enemy fighters. This is a destroy mission because I want uh, them to be destroyed. Now, something I, I forgot to do on this one is I, get, I need to make this a prerequisite. And that basically means you have to have fil fulfilled these other two missions before you can do this third mission. It won't even show up on the screen. So this stops people jumping around and, and kind of ruining the game by doing the later missions. Uh, and I'm going to go into this one because I also need to make that a prerequisite for the first. Then we'll go back to take out enemy fighters. Again, this is destroy. I'm going to set a waypoint. And I can set a waypoint on the enemy unit to make this an, an easier mission. But I'm actually going to set it to FA26 mission. And this time I'll set the waypoint. So it's going to highlight the next waypoint along there. Uh, again, I'll add some notes. Take out the strike fighters. The targets I want it to destroy. You can see it down here. I'm going to set all four. Um, so everything looks good there. The minimum required to complete this mission, I'm going to make as four, so they have to kill them all. And I'll just leave that as OK. And then I'll add a new one. And this one is going to be land. Again, I'll make this final. So as soon as they land, um, that's it. That It's the mission complete. And the waypoint will be base. I'll also set the waypoint as well. So RTB to Akatan. And the radius is five meters. So basically they've got to pass within five meters of the um, waypoint on the runway. So you could do a touchdown uh, as long as you flew straight through that waypoint, but you have to get within five meters of the waypoint. I'll make that a little bigger, just in case. Um, I want to rename that as well. So I'll just call this one RTB. So we've got a takeoff, fly to the area of operation, attack the enemy and return home. Nice and easy. I'm now going to make um, a few events to make, well, at least one event to make the mission more exciting. So first of all, I need to trigger the enemies to take off. So that's going to be my first triggered event. And I'll, I'll, oops, let's go back into that edit and rename. So this is um, enemy take off. And it's going to be a proximity trigger on the waypoint path end. And you can see this blue circle. So that's my trigger area at moment 500. So let's make this maybe, uh, let's make it six kilometers. So you can see now when the aircraft basically get past this city, then they're in this trigger area. And it's triggered by the player on entering this area. And what do we want it to do? So I'm going to select unit group. I'm going to select the enemy alpha group. And I'm going to tell them to take off. Once they've taken off, I'll also select a new action. And I'm going to tell the enemy group to fly to waypoint, wherever that is. Oh, enemies only have uh, fly orbit. So they should fly an orbit path 
and then I'm going to say F26 mission. So that's going to make them fly towards the same point that we are uh, flying towards. And I'm going to set their initial altitude at, let's say, uh, 4,500 metres. That should do. So they need to get within one kilometre at 4,500 metres around this waypoint so we they should be flying towards it and we should be flying towards it and we should there you know be roughly meeting up around the same time then next i want another trigger so i'm going to close this and i'm going to create another trigger and this one is going to be when the first units have died i want the the second set of units to come up so this one now is going to be conditional and just like the conditional we did before I'm going to add two units because there's two units in the group and I will say if so that's the first one and that's the second one number 10 and number 11 these these go down in the order that you put the units down in and I'm going to say if this is not alive or this is not alive so again we want an R so if unit one or unit two is not alive then i want you to do something and again the action is going to be i want those units to take off so unit group bravo take off and i also want unit group bravo to attack enemies so there is an attack in here somewhere there we go attack target and that target is going to be Alpha 1-1. Because generally somebody's going to be in the Alpha 1-1 seat. Um, I could go about this a different way uh, and just set them to engage enemies. But they are set to engage enemies anyway. So they should come over this way. Um, hopefully the, 20, uh, the F-26s will have to stay a little bit further away from the ship. So they don't get destroyed by the missile cruisers. And, and that should keep them away. To hopefully allow the other team to, to come and engage. Uh, we will rename. Because it's always handy to rename. So this is Bravo Team. Take off. So that's, that's pretty much enough. Um, to create uh, a small mission there for um, Alpha Team. So we want them to take off, we want them to fly around the island. We'll come to here. That unit will take off. Hopefully they will start getting radar pings. Everybody's going to fly towards this, uh, this waypoint. They can shoot each other as soon as one of the enemy dies. Its reinforcements are going to take off. So hopefully by the time the second one dies, the reinforcements will be in the air and ready to attack. Once everything's destroyed, we don't, we're don't we not setting them to destroy the carrier. We could add that in as well, but I'm not going to bother. Uh, I've just said you can RTB once the air threats are gone. And that is pretty much the mission. Uh, as I said, there's a lot more options you, that you can play around with in there. And I do advise to, to just play around. There's far too many for, for me to go through one by one by one. Um, and also the um, the Discord, the official VTOL Discord is is really good for information for, for people who, who do this. I've got a lot of help on there in the past. Uh, however, I'm going to I'm going to say that that's my mission. So now I'm going to go into the editor. Now something I haven't been doing here because I'm not really going to save this uh, or keep this. But I haven't been saving. You should do this quite regular because if you've done all this work and it crashes, you you lose it. Uh, so you need to save regularly. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to Scenario Info. So this is now information about this particular mission. This is what people are going to see at the start, uh, at the, the, the start screens and when you start the briefings, which we'll look at soon. So this, again, is just going to be a test tutorial. Um, simple mission tutorial. I can add images in. So maybe there are some example files in here. So maybe add the ASF30 in. Um, 
RTB waypoints for each team. So you can set it to RTB waypoints. You don't have to because we've got RTB as uh, our spawn point. A refuel waypoint is going to be our base waypoint again. Uh, but if you had a tanker, that would show up here in our eyes. So you can have your refuel as a tanker. Bullseye. Bullseye is a place on the map that's shared with everyone. So let's say my bullseye is the seed radar. Budgets for the mission, scores per kill, scores to the other team per death. And then let's go into briefings. So add a new screen. We'll just add new. This is the first briefing. So I don't know. Slide one. Stuff. And things. You can add an image as well to the slide. So when you are looking at the briefing, the image is on the left hand side. So you can add uh, briefings in. Do we have a strike? Yeah, we'll add the strike fighter in. And you can add an audio. Um, so maybe uh, a bit of music playing, or you might want um, something like Amazon Polly, uh, which you can add text to and it will speak that text for you. Um, you could have one of those uh, speak in your, your mission details. Uh, to add more slides, you just click new and add as many as you want. If you've missed a slide out, you missed some information and you think, ah, that should have been slide three and it's down here at slide five, uh, you can move slides up and down. So even, even though I press up and it changes, it says it's number one, that's just because it's position one. All the information is still here. So that's your briefings. You can select whether it's a day or night or morning mission and selecting this means that whoever starts the mission can choose. I like to have that on. We'll click OK. Again, we need to save before we do anything else. View has a mini map if you want to see the whole map. Um, so you can see where your units have been placed. Make it full screen as well. Turn mini map off. Uh, under tools, we have a measure tool, which is pretty useful. Ah, so again, if you want to know how far away units are apart, you can see I clicked to start, and then as I drag it out, you can see up at the top here a distance in meters. Repack map is if you make changes to the map in map editor. You need to repack map to see those changes in your mission. Otherwise, the mission will just keep the, the previous map. Launch is to test, test the scenario. And then when you're all happy with it, you can upload it to Steam. So for this, I just want to show a few extra little tools that are helpful in the mission editor. And then that should be it. So I'm going to launch this scenario. I do have steam vr already running as we saw i opened the mission editor from steam vr if you don't open steam vr if you just open this straight away in desktop version you've got to close it and then reopen steam vr in order to do this testing um, so i'm going to click ok i will pick my pilot and launch and i'll see you in game Okay, so first of all, here we are in the um, in the ready room, in the locker room, and you can skip this locker room by pressing R on the keyboard. So when you're testing, if you didn't start, now this only really works in single player missions, um, more than multiplayer, because in the multiplayer lobby, you do have to go through the multiplayer lobby. Uh, but if you are making a single player mission, when you get to this screen on the desktop, press R and it will skip. Otherwise, we've got to go through the, pro the motions. Pick my team. Pick Alpha 1-1 because it's flight ready. I'm not going to go through equipment or anything like that. This is just testing. If I did want to test the mission, I would obviously load out, maybe go air to air. But I didn't need to do that for testing. Uh, for what I'm, I'm going to show anyway, I'm going to start the mission. And once I'm actually in the game like this, I can take my headset off, which I shall do now, and I can press the insert key. Uh, is it the insert key? Delete key? One of the keys. 
It's not delete. Delete goes back here. It must be insert. So let's try that again. Enter vehicle. So headset off and insert. Okay, there we go. So that's what I was trying to do. Um, I can still see through my headset. I'm still sat in the pilot seat. Um, but now I'm here in developer mode. I can press the square brackets and I can cycle through all the units. So this is really useful to make sure units are doing what you expect. And just like the mission editor, you can orbit and zoom. So there we go. That's I'm actually in there. Although you can't really see me. Uh, come on, stop it. My pilot is actually in there. You can just about see maybe if I stick my arm out the window. Hello. Uh, but I'm actually looking at this on the desktop. It's called developer mode. So again, if you were expecting, um, let me actually take this headset off. Okay. So again, if you were expecting a unit to be moving around or something like that, oh, my pilot's come out here now, move my headset. Uh, you can cycle through the units. Um, so I've not got these, these aren't moving for some reason. So these should be driving around a path. So again, this is good for developing. I know that these aren't working. I can go back in and debug that in the mission. Uh, my radar is working. I can see that there's the sound sites. I can cycle through. Here are my aircraft. Those aren't flight ready. Those aren't flight ready. Um, who's this? These are the missile cruisers, the carrier, Seaways, and back to myself. So again, very useful for seeing if you know the AI is doing what you're expecting, or if you're doing something that you're not expecting, you can go in and watch them. Once you're done with that, just press insert and you get back to the pilot seat. So there we go. That's the mission editor. Um, as short and sweet as I could possibly make it. Like I said, I could probably wax lyrical for hours on all the different um, conditions and setups and things like that that you can do for your mission. If you are creating a mission and you're having trouble and it's something that I haven't covered, please do ask on the, in the comments. I do try and read and respond to the comments as much as I, uh, um, as much as I can. So you know, do do come on there. You could, you are welcome to come along to my Discord. The link will be in the description. And as I said on the VTOL uh, Discord, official Discord, there are some great people on there. Very very helpful guys and and, and girls probably. Um, well, that's that's it for me for this video. I'd just like to say thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support. Thanks again, everybody, for all your nice messages. I really, really do appreciate it. All, all of those that have popped in on the server, all of those that I've played with in-game, um, the community for VTOL is just, at the moment, it's just full of fantastic people. So thank you all very, very much for your support and kind words. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.